What is up, everybody? Welcome back to the Montana Method Podcast. One more time, as always, your host, Nelson Rodriguez, author of Montana Method. Today, got a very special guest, bare knuckle fighter, Tyler Good John El Tornado, along with my good buddy, Rigo. Been friends with him for a, a long time. We linked up. He told me about a great a great guest from my podcast, and what do you know? I'm a fight fan, as you guys know, so we're going to get into it. A lot of good stuff, probably some stuff you haven't heard from Tyler before, so... Stay tuned. Here we go. I've been out here hustling all my life. Every day we get into it. Really out here in these streets. That's day and night. Like there's nothing to it. When I was going through it, dog, I never got your call. I never asked for nothing, no. But now I want it all. Promise I'm a do it. Came from rags to riches. Rags to riches. Came from rags to riches. Rags to riches. Came from rags. Tyler, what's up, buddy? I'm all good, man. Thank you very much for this Definitely. opportunity. Definitely. And, and thank you for coming. Thank you for your time. I'm a huge fight fan. Bare knuckle, UFC, boxing. And th this is cool. I always love meeting pro fighters and yeah. seeing their journey, their story. So Yeah, cool. I mean, yeah. We all have we all have a story. Um, yeah, mine mine's quite a big yeah, story. It's pretty good. <laughs> it's a pretty good one. Yeah, yeah. So cool. No, thank you. So, uh, can I assume you're originally from the UK? Yeah. So I'm from uh, a place called Ely, um, Cambridgeshire, back in England. I mean, people from England don't even know where Ely is. It's, <laughs> it's that small. In the um, middle of nowhere. Uh, you know, we have about twenty thousand people live there. Wow. Um, I'm from a, a farming background. My dad's a farmer. I'm a country boy, um, yeah, and I'm out in the big smoke, Miami now. <laughs> <laughs> Man, going from like a little town in, in England to Miami, that, that must be a culture shock. Yeah. How long you been here? Uh, I mean, on and off now, I've been here for about a year. Okay. Um, you know, I've been living here like for about six months, um, obviously with Rigo, my brother, um, and yeah, I love it. I love That's it. Awesome. It's um Like you say, it's very, very different, obviously. Right. You know culture like obviously you know the ho how spanish it is here right, and everything right. else i mean you can't really explain you know to people back home how spanish it is and you just got to come here and, and, and sort experience of experience it, it yeah. yeah um but i love it yeah i love it you know the the gym that i'm in there's probably like two or three people who can speak english <laughs> you know it's crazy but mate. i love it again it's you know you it's yeah, man, you've got people from South America, you know, Cuba, Puerto Rico, Dominican, all, all here trying to make it happen, mm. you know, the dream. So, yeah, man, I'm blessed. That's awesome, man. Definitely. Mm. So how you, I know your nickname is El Tornado, which mm -hmm. is interesting because you, you, you're not a Spanish speaker. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so how did you end up getting that nickname? Uh, so I started boxing at 10 years old. Um, I had my then trainer, uh, Mick Sawyer, who... I love that guy. I, whenever I fight, I always have Mick on the back of my shorts um, as a show, of, you know, respect, you know, for what he's done all the years that he put in. You know, like I say, 10, 10 till when I turned pro at 18. Um, and, you know, as a kid, I mean, I'd like to think I'm a little bit more st stylistically better now, but as a kid, I was the same. I just went in there throwing bombs, wanting to fight. And my trainer called me Tornado. And then as I turned professional, um, Again, you know, I was fearless. I wanted to fight everyone. And my style, that they sort of said it was like the Mexican style of just coming and having a fight. El Tornado was born. <laughs> That's yeah, cool. So, yeah, yeah. I like that, man. Yeah. Rigo, how'd you meet, how'd you meet Tyler? Well, um, it was actually through my cousin George. Um, he's friends with Luis Palomino, which is the champ right now, two belt champ. Okay. Uh, for BKFC. And um, my cousin said, hey, listen, you know, you know, Palomino, which had brought him on to his team, uh, which he fought Palomino. Mm. Um, once, uh, once he brought him on to the team, whatever, he was staying at, a, at an Airbnb. And uh, the Airbnb guy was, he was, you know, he's like, hey, listen, I can't, you know, I, I can't let him stay there anymore. Right. So my cousin called me and he said, hey, listen, um, I got this fighter, you know, he's good people. I'm like, man, if you tell me he's good people, you know, come right ahead. You can stay with me. That's awesome. And uh, he's been staying with me ever since. And, and I've supported him in whichever way I could. And, and, uh, and yeah, man, we, we, we pretty much became brothers after that. <laughs> so I became friends with Rigo a few years ago, just before the pandemic. And I can tell you that 
you fell into the best possible hands mm -hmm. that you could have fallen into. Yeah, thank like, you. I appreciate that. I can't even express into words. Nah. Like, I don't even, me and him are friends. We, we could see each other probably like once every couple of years. And it'll be like we saw each other. We're, it's just he's that kind of guy. Yeah, yeah. yeah you know what I mean. Yeah. I mean, you live with him. You, you yeah. know, <laughs> like just look completely selfless. Like, you know, straight up, right from you know when I I properly moved about six months ago, and you know it was obviously very daunting. I'm mm. coming out here on my own. Um, you know, trying to settle in. Um, you know, trying to get about Miami. Right. Um, I didn't have a car. Rico sorted me out with a car. Obviously, sorted me out with you know, the place to stay, just any kind of advice that I need. Um, yeah, I wouldn't be in the mindset of, you know, as positive as I am without Rigo. There's no, mm. there's no way. There's no way. Um, so, yeah, he's <laughs> yeah, he's really been there for me. That's awesome, man. Yeah. I'm a firm believer that when you put yourself in a position, when you're taking the right actions in life, when you're chasing a dream, the right things and the right people will appear in your path. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah. So... I'm a person that ever since I was a kid, you know, I've been chasing a dream and now my dream is to be a big podcaster and do, and do things within the business world. And I've never, it never ceases to amaze me how the world puts things together. Mm -hmm. when, when you're taking that action and, and you're, you're like through blind faith, like I'm just going to keep moving forward. I don't know how I'm going to do this. I don't know how I'm going to get there. But yeah. And it's also, you know, it has a lot to do with the environment that you're, that you're in Definitely. at the moment, you know. Yeah, yeah. And it's it's like with my kids, you know, I, my with my son, you know, once he was in the right environment, which is living with me, he, you know, I provided that right environment for him, and he, you know, he just he flourished. Flourished, flourished. Yeah. yeah, man. It's like I don't know if you if you've heard of this, but there's um, you know, in like Chinese restaurants where they have fish, those fish. Usually they're like really big fish, right? But because they're in that small tank, they only grow to the size of the yeah, tank. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If they were out in the wild in the ocean, they'd be huge fish. Mm -hmm. But because they're in this tank, they only grow yeah. to the size of the tank. Mm -hmm. I think it's the same thing with us, you know, yeah, based absolutely. on your environment. You know? Oh, one million percent. I mean, like I say, um, you know, without sounding too disrespectful to the people back home, I'm from a city of 20,000 people. Um, you know, opportunity back there, especially in what I do, the fight industry, you know, it, it's, it's dead. Do you know what mm. I mean? So, you know, as a fighter, as a kid growing up, the dream to to train and fight in America is mm. huge. Like, you know, I, I, looking back on it now, if someone had said to me at 10 years old, you're going to end up in Miami, I'd, I wouldn't have believed it. <laughs> major to with be a bare knuckle yeah, fighting yeah, promotions, yeah. you know, it's um, crazy. Yeah, it is crazy. It is crazy. Um, but yeah, no, like like you said earlier, you know, you're you're working hard. You're showing that determination, perseverance, and and things are put in your path to help you. And mm. I, I truly believe that. And you know, meeting Rigo, um, yeah, he, he was put in my path on this journey. You know, that's awesome. So in bare knuckle, uh, I mean, I watch bare knuckle, but I don't know about like the weight classes. Are the weight classes are are they boxing based? Are they MMA based? How does it work? Yeah, so they're a bit more like UFC sort of UFC. weights. Yeah, okay. um, I f like I'm one fifty five, which I think is classed as like light, lightweight. Lightweight, yeah, yeah. I mean, like obviously where I come from, boxing background. Even for me, like it was, it's different for different. me. Um, yeah. But yeah, um, it's blowing up, man. It's blowing up. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's yeah, and the fighters, you guys are getting, you know, big. Yeah. Bare knuckles snatches yeah. up some big names. Yeah. You know? I know Yuli's doing. He's a bigger guy. I know he's yeah. like in light heavyweight. Yeah, Yuli. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah he. Yeah. Um. I know he's like getting popular and, and that yeah. kind of. And then you have guys like uh, Gustavo Trujillo. He's. A, I don't know if you well, I heard of him. He's a Cuban up there. Yeah, he's, you've uh, met Gustavo. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. Uh, that's. Uh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Fort Steve. Yeah. 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 I met him. He's a cool yeah. guy. He's a cool yeah. guy. He was. <laughs> I remember recently he was like going after was it Lorenzo Hunt? He was trying yeah, to like yeah, call him yeah, out. Yeah, yeah. Juno Chung! <laughs> Juno Chung! I love it. He, he, he actually yeah. knocked uh, Lorenzo out, didn't he? Yeah, I, yeah, he yeah, yeah, yeah. He did, out, he so, did. He did. Um, you know, and obviously Lorenzo's doing his thing now. Right. It's like, was he double champion, double weight champion? Yeah, yeah, that, yeah. So, yeah. Um, Super awesome. Yeah, yeah, and they're snatching up some, some big names. They got, yeah. was it Mike Perry recently? Mike right? Perry. You know, Chad Mendes, Eddie Alvarez. Big names, um, yeah, man. Yeah. That's awesome. Like, yeah, and every event every event that I've been to, it's just, it's more people and, and more it's people. bigger and, more and people. bigger and bigger, yeah. Yeah, 
It's um, you know, it's getting to that point now. Like I, I even I was surprised. We went to the tryouts here in Miami like a couple of weeks ago, and the place was rammed, absolutely mm. packed. And I actually was chatting to a couple of the guys. Um, there was guys that had made it over from California and places like that, and they were like, "I literally spent all my money to get here. One quarter flight at four a.m. He hadn't slept. He went straight to the tryouts and that." So I was like, That's "Right, you know, these people, they're this, hungry, man. Yeah, they're hungry for this." Um, you know, and th- it, there is, you know, with bare knuckle now, I think because it's, you know, it's got such that taboo factor where, right. you know, the blood, the knockouts, everything else is, you know, pe- people people love violence. Mm. <laughs> we love violence. We do, And man. at the end of the day, that feeds it. Do you know what I mean? So, um, you know, you're getting big exposure. Like, right. you know, my videos of my fights online are getting millions of views and stuff mm. like that. If I post something up on Instagram or Facebook, you know, it's getting thousands and thousands of views because that shock factor, especially when I'm putting pictures up on my face now, people are like, whoa. <laughs> and you're all like, yeah. 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 Um, yeah. He got like a million something views on yeah. on the one right after his last fight. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That's it awesome. Did. Um, you know, and it's, again, it's just shock factor, isn't it? Mm, That's definitely. What it is. Yeah. Bare knuckle, you know what I love about it? It's different. You know, it's not boxing, and it's mm-hmm. definitely not MMA. It's its own thing. You yeah, know what I mean? Completely. Yeah. Um, and like I say, it's, it's good. Like when you when you look at the tryouts, you know, people have sort of like delved into a little bit of boxing, a little bit of MMA, but um, you know, haven't really got much of a combat sport background. They're just going straight into bare knuckle mm. without any pro experience. Like it's its own sport now. It's crazy. You know. Um, yeah. And, you know, come, I was a professional boxer for, what, seven, eight years. So, um, you know, obviously I, I know boxing and, yeah, boxing and bare knuckle are totally, totally different. different. Um, just take it from me. <laughs> <laughs> and I would think the kind of guy that's willing to go to, into bare knuckle, going back to being hungry, like, fighters are hungry, right? Because you guys, you guys put yourself literally in the face of danger all the time. Even not just in fights, like in training and sparring, you guys literally willingly put yourself in posi- in bad positions to get hurt, and it's kind of you kind of have to get used to that, you know. Yeah. And bare knuckle is like, <laughs> bro, you know, it's it's crazy, it's crazy. Yeah. Um. Like there's been there's been a lot of guys who have come over from a very successful background as an MMA fighter, boxing, and you know they've got in the bare knuckle ring and they've. They've got hit for the first time. They're just like, they whoa. No, they're just yeah. like, wow. Like, you know, a lot of people, especially boxers, you know, a lot of defensive boxers who are not used to seeing their mm. own blood and stuff like that, you know, it's a, it's, it's crazy. It's a thing, man. Like, I, you know, I'm at that point in my career now where, you know, I've seen and pretty much done everything now. I've had eyes closed. I've had <sighs> eyes full of blood. You know, I've been blind for rounds. That's and, crazy. And, you know, I've pretty much seen and done it all now. So, um, yeah, it's it's really something to get used to. That's awesome, yeah. man. Yeah, <laughs> I just I love I love innovation, mm. and to see someone come up with a promotion that's like in a league of its own, mm. where you still kind of get the premise and it's similar to boxing, but it's just totally different at the same time. Mm-hmm. I love that, that's just like the American spirit of like entrepreneurship. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. I love that. Like mm-hmm. when people come up with original concepts. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's it's like I think something that works well with bare knuckle. Um, you know, you watch a lot of boxing cards, MMA. You know, it can get boring. It mm. can, it, and you know, then them same repetitive fights of ten, twelve, or five three minute rounds MMA. Right, right. You know, it can get boring. But them five two minute fights, not many fights in bare knuckle go the distance. So you know, we, we've said it a few times. We walked away from the show, and it's actually like, do you know what? Like. That wasn't too long. Do you know what I mean? It actually yeah. felt quite short, mm. but it was enough. Do you know what I mean? And I think I've, you know, me personally, I've been to a lot of boxing shows, and by the end of it, you're like, oh, yeah, I've had enough now. I'm if you're lucky, you. you'll get one knockout. Yeah, you know? yeah, yeah, yeah. But you know, it's just constant yeah, knockouts. Yeah, yeah, you're yeah, like, yeah. whoa, whoa, yeah. whoa, and you leave feeling like actually, I could have probably watched a few more fights. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, so yeah, it just leaves the the customer wanting more, basically, isn't it? That's awesome. Yeah. <laughs> so. I know bare knuckle. I've watched a few fights, but I haven't delved in. I know is is it five two minute rounds? Yeah. So when when I I used to be I was the world champion. So there's two promotions. There's BKB back in the UK, um, who are also um, do it over here in America, and then there's BKFC over here, who I'm signed to now. Um, and we used to do seven two minute rounds back in England, which was you know it's a lot seven rounds. Um, it's five twos here in England. Uh, 
But yeah, I, like, I mean, my fight style, I would probably prefer it being seven rounds. Mm. You know, because I come from a professional boxing background, I do prefer the longer rounds. Um, but like I say, I can see why they have stacked to the five twos because it is just you know it's, it's fast, constant, yeah. fast turnover. You know, people people want that. You know, and then I know also like clinching is allowed, right? Mm -hmm. I've seen that yeah. in fights. Mm -hmm. and yeah. Okay. Yeah, that was something that again, like coming from a boxing background, I didn't really know anything about right. clinch work. Um, you know, that's just not something. Even when you're sparring, I don't I don't look to clinch, clinch. and that. Um, and so when I fought Lewis Palomino, shout out the pound for pound champ of BKFC, um, who is now my manager. So I fought him two years ago. And I, I mean, I come over in the middle of the pandemic. I quarantined in Dubai on my own for 15 days, come to Miami, fought the champion on my own, no training team, no nothing. Um, but obviously the big part of that, of his game was using that clinch because he knew that I wasn't used to it. Right, right. Um, so I went into that fight. I took the fight to him. Um, and, and one of my, like, attributes my biggest attributes is my head movement so I like to get in close rolling slipping and I basically just moved in he got me in that clinch he ripped like three uppercuts oh. and I was just blind in my left eye from like round one um and that was like all right okay yeah that clinch is pretty useful <laughs> <laughs> so <laughs> I'm, at, I'm at his gym now um I'm obviously training alongside him learning all the clinch game myself and and looking to use it um, when I fight now, which is cool. But, um, yeah, I had to learn the hard way on that one. Yeah, it's interesting because it's – you think, all right, it's boxing, but then you throw in bare knuckle, mm -hmm. you throw in clinch work, you throw in these little nuances, mm -hmm. and it becomes – it's it's a totally – because mm -hmm. clinch is more like Muay Thai stuff, yeah. you know? So it's, yeah. it's such an interesting yeah. thing. It know? is because, like I say, you know, I was like, oh, well, I'll be all right getting out of the clinch. It'll be fine. You know, I'll just roll out. And I didn't think it would be as big an issue as it was. And then once I got in that fight, and like mm -hmm. I said, you know, Palomino had, what, 50-odd pro MMA fights. And when he got me in that clinch, it's, you, you're not getting out of that clinch. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Right? yeah. He's yeah. got you. He's got hold of you. And, yeah, he can pretty much do what he wants to. Um, <laughs> and yeah. the dirty boxing, right? Because you clinch and you can... Yeah. That's not allowed in boxing. Where yeah. here, it's like, yeah. if you're if I'm stuck in this position and you have my head right here and I can throw uppercuts and you can do some serious damage. Yeah, right? yeah. yeah, and I mean, like, look, bare knuckle, all it takes is, is you know, it can take a jab and mm -hmm. it will literally blind you and then, you know, your game plan goes out the window, out really. The window. You know, at that point, you've got to try and adjust. and But that's what makes it exciting. So yeah, Definitely. Yeah. It's awesome. Yeah, his last couple of fights, he's got ripped open like quick. Immediately, like Immediately. as soon as the fight started? That's crazy. Yeah, I mean, like, so, like I say, I, I was, you know, I had, as an amateur boxer, I had seven, 70 boxing matches, then mm -hmm. I had 18 professional boxing matches, but in 10 of them were like 10 round title fights, so they were like long. I was in a lot of wars as a boxer, and I got cut a lot as a boxer. In your face. So, you know, now taking that over into the bare knuckle, like, I mean, you, you know, it's visibly, <laughs> you can see all the scars <laughs> on my face. And, you know, like Rigo said, that, that last fight, and I'm not just saying it, like, it literally, like, it, it, I was like a flick jab, and it yeah. just went, oh no, my God. Everything yeah. opened up. I was, I was in the front, and I'm like, no, you guys, <laughs> like, bro. Like, in the first, like, 20 seconds, wasn't it? Yeah. And it's just like, from that moment on, like I say, you know, every, every, Thing that you plan to do <laughs> goes, out the, goes out the window because the window. you're blind. You've yeah. got to get back to the corner. The cut man's got to sort it so that the blood's not going into your eyes. You know, it's a lot. So um, I've actually recently just had stem cell treatment done mm. on uh, on my face. I'm going back for more. So I'm hoping to God that um, now it does something because stem cells ha have helped a lot of people. Yeah, yeah. it's it's uh, interesting. Yeah, the way medicine is evolving is nuts. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah. I love. I love seeing these crazy, like, you know, I, I saw, I don't know if you've seen, Joe Rogan did an episode of his podcast with this doctor from Panama and Mel Gibson. What? And he talked about this, the stuff he's been able to do, and you're just like, no way, you know? And <laughs> yeah. stem cell, it's crazy. Yeah. He, he had this guy who had an airplane crash, paralyzed, like, and injected stem cells, and after a year, the guy was walking. It's crazy. Right. Yeah, 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 it's crazy. Yeah, I mean, I've, I've had lots of good stuff. I mean, to be honest, before I come to Miami, I didn't know what stem cells was. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean, yeah. like, no one's talking about this back home. Um, and then, 
like I say, like Palomino, he sort of introduced it to me. You know, he's had he's recently just gone through three surgeries in a day, mm. um, and you know, it's just recovery, man. Like you know, I'm 32 now. I've been fighting since I was 10 years old. So um, yeah, anything <laughs> to to make my body a little bit better, definitely. Um, and especially these cuts, like I say, because right. it's a, it's an issue when I fight. So um, yeah, we'll and, see. And, and also, you got to think that. You know, there's there's not enough time between fights mm. for them to heal properly. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Hundred percent. Yeah. So they get they get ripped open again, yeah. and it's like, and that that skin just becomes. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> not really. Skin. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, so it's tissue like, paper. Yeah, exactly. It's like <laughs> tissue paper. So a tip. I know a typical fight camp is supposed to be like eight to ten weeks, right? Yeah. Have you been taking a lot of like short notice fights? Um. No, I mean, if anything, I've been a little bit unlucky with the way that. You know, the fights have come about, like I say, I was, you know, I've become world champion in bare knuckle back home in the UK and I was flying my first three fights. I, you know, three wins, um, three fight of the nights. And I fought the champion in my third fight who'd had like 16, 17 bare knuckle fights. So, you know, I, I beat the best there was um, and I had some like real momentum. And mm. then obviously COVID happened. Yeah, yeah. Um, which messed everyone up. I come out um, and I fought in America on my own the first time in Mississippi, and I fought a guy called Charles Fenley Bennett, who, if anyone knows who this guy is, he's a legend. I mean, at the time, because I didn't know a lot about MMA, I, it was announced that I was fighting him. And like I said, I was on my own. I was training. Was that at the Gamebred FC? No, no this was... No. Or Icon FC, is, what's it called? This was three no. years ago, BKFC. Oh, was it BKFC? Uh, okay. In Mississippi. Because um, I remember seeing an event... A few years ago, I thought yeah, it was... Yeah, he's done anyway, a lot yeah. of the game braid stuff there. Right, right. Bare Knuckle MMA and that. Right, yeah. right. Um, so, yeah, no, I, I was in Vegas on my own and, and I remember the fight getting announced and all my friends who were, like, big MMA fans they were messaging me, I can't believe you're fighting Crazy Horse. This guy was in, like, Pride and, yeah, yeah. and everything else. So the beast. Um, and, <clears throat> it was, I mean, that, that camp, I mean, you could make a movie out of that camp. So, like I said, I'm on my own in the middle of the pandemic in Vegas training by myself um, and two weeks out I got COVID um, horrible really ill um, and I managed to get like a, um, a negative test like four days out from the fight um, so to be out of fly to Mississippi and I went and fought um, yeah Charles Fanley Bennett uh, and it wasn't until like afterwards and I was like actually he was pretty good like I'm gonna look into his stuff and I was like oh wow okay he had like 80 or 90 pro MA fights um, so yeah, that was a great experience. Um, just a mad camp, just crazy. That whole pandemic thing was wild. Like looking back on it now, just you know, quarant like I say, quarantining in, in different countries. Um, you know, I, I went to Dominican Republic for fifteen days. There was a three p.m. curfew, so you had to be indoors by wow. three p.m. Um, yeah, it was a madness. That's crazy. Know, like they're just like there will never be anything like that. Well, probably not in our lifetime, but right. like. I can remember the airports, like, you know, there'd be, like, two Nobody. or three people in the air, in the whole airport, and you're all masked up, and everyone, no one's going near each other, and it's just like, whoa, it was... It was you should have yeah. came to Miami sooner. We were partying, like... Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, yeah, what, yeah, like, yeah. that 2020 already? We're like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty much. No, I remember, like, back in England, it was... Um, you had you were allowed thirty minutes outside your house, That's and if it, and if you were if you got caught, you would get arrested wow. and, and everything else. Yeah, um, so it was you know it was a it was a madness. That's yeah. pretty crazy. Yeah. Nah, here it was like yeah. after two months, everybody got tired, and then the, the government, like the local government, tried to like, no, listen, we're gonna find you, and everybody was like. Find your mother, bro. <laughs> <laughs> Who gives a shit? There were so many of us that didn't did yeah, mind. Yeah. He's just like, what are we going to do? I'll tell you what. Like, I was obviously, I lived in Vegas for like three months of the pandemic. And like, that was mad because I've never actually been to Vegas when it's like popping. Right. And it was a ghost town. Like, because it was like 50% capacity. Like, so you'd go into the So the almost casino, nobody was there. It was like, yeah. no one was there. It was, it was a ghost town. Um, and I remember... Um, I was with another fight and we were walking down the strip and it was just empty, like a few homeless people on the side of the street and he's like, you won't even be able to walk down this street for how busy it is normally. And it's just like, it was a complete ghost town. That's yeah. awesome, man. Yeah. <laughs> That's crazy to think about. But then New Year's Eve, this was funny, 
New Year's Eve, they shut the strip off and it was just thousands and thousands and thousands of people down there. It's like, all right, okay, COVID took the day off. <laughs> you must have been like, all right, this is Las Vegas. <laughs> now we're talking, right? That's yeah, crazy. Yeah. No, nah, here it was it was a joke because <laughs> one of my <laughs> somebody I know was having their birthday and we we took him to to a strip joint for his birthday right. and it was like, Oh, if you're sitting down at the table, you don't have to wear a mask. And it was like, bro, a chick is rubbing like her yeah. entire body in my face. <laughs> She's been sweating for two hours. But oh, if I'm, I have to wear a mask if I'm not at my table, it was such a joke. Yeah, it was so yeah. funny. But yeah, Miami was uh, we we were <laughs> we was, were different. Yeah, yeah, it was unique. <laughs> it was unique. <laughs> for sure, for sure. No. So uh, what's what's the pl are you gonna stick to lightweight? You want to do move up? What, what's the plan? What are you gonna do? Uh, so the actual plan for now. Um, like I say, I've just like, recently had stem cell treatment. You're waiting to heal before yeah, you get Yeah, waiting to let, you know, I'm going to have some more of that treatment done in a few weeks. Um, and speaking to my management, I actually want to go back and have a boxing match. Um, so the plan is to probably have a boxing match before the end of the year is out. Um, okay. Because I was actually, I actually had my license taken away from me back in England as, as a boxer. So like I say earlier, I was, I was a pro boxer for seven years. Uh, won the English title, fought for the WBC International. I, you know, I fought for some big fights, um, and then age twenty six, um, I done I done a podcast just speaking about how I used to make one hundred and forty pounds, uh, a lot of saunas, salt baths, and everything like that. And British Border Control, who run boxing back home, revoked my license. Really? Yeah. So um, hmm. yeah, I mean that's what pushed me into bare knuckle because you know that was my job at the time. I'd been a professional boxer for seven years at a high level, um, to not having a job anymore. And I was wow. like, <laughs> what, what am I going to do, do now? now? Like, yeah. So and it was funny. It was again. It was always like it was meant to happen. I remember putting on like the local news back home in England, and. Um, there was a you know a, a piece about bare knuckle boxing. It's becoming the fastest growing sport in Britain. The promoter was on there. I was like, right, okay, I'm, I'm having a bit of this. This is a bit of me. Um, and I rang the promoter. We sorted it out, and literally, I fought like six weeks later. Yeah, <laughs> so, um, that's crazy. Which is, I think, I said this to someone the other day. With bare knuckle, I think you've just got to throw yourself into it because mm. the longer you have to say like. You'll talk yourself out of it. <laughs> you will. Yeah. You just got to throw yourself into it, and just go. Do you know what I mean? Like, just yeah. It, the, the more time you've got to talk yourself out of doing a bare knuckle fight, eventually you'll talk yourself out of it. That's a great philosophy for yeah. life. Let me yeah. tell you because yeah. it, it's the same thing in anything. Yeah. Everything I've ever experienced, it was always that you had that internal conversation and whatever. You just, the only way to shake yourself out of it was just to dive into it. Yeah. You know what I mean? You can't. I, I compare it to the pool. You can't toe dip, man. Nah. You got to jump in the water. The water's freezing, whatever. Yeah. But you'll get you'll get used to it. You know. Uh, the yeah. thing is, we're 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 we think that on the other side of the door it's a lion, and mm. and they said this to us uh, in our training. Um, they think it's a lion, and it's really just a mouse with a bullhorn. Yeah, bro. You know. Yeah, yeah, your fears. We, we, yeah, exactly. Your the fears. Mind, yeah, good the <laughs> mind, <laughs> the mind likes to th make you think that yeah. it's like the worst thing, yeah. and you're gonna die if you do this, and then you actually do it, and it's like, man, that wasn't even that bad. You know? <laughs> I mean, so. at the time, there were. I mean, you can, as you can imagine, from my family, from my friends, when I told them I was doing bare knuckle, because like at this point, I started bare knuckle what five, six years ago, like it wasn't really a thing, like right. especially not commercially. Do you know what I mean? So people are like, what? you're going to do a bare knuckle fight. Like, no way. What are you doing that for? Like, obviously my mum, my dad, nobody wanted me to do it. But um, just went with my gut, man. I just was like, I've got to do this. Um, and I loved it. I remember the, after my first bare knuckle fight, I didn't sleep for like two days. The adrenaline was mad. It was madness. I mean, I mean, it's dangerous, like, because... After my first fight, I, I didn't take too many punches, but I remember like being in uh, a little bit in the clinch and like would be punching in the back of the head and that, and I had a really, I had a big lump on the back of my head, and I mm. went and spoke to like the um, like the hospital team afterwards, and they were like, "That looks like a hematoma. Be careful, <sighs> all this kind of stuff." So I got ice and I was just icing the back of my head. Went back to the hotel, my friends, all my friends, I've just won, knocked the guy out, come on, yeah, let's get on the piss. Uh, so I've had a couple of beers and I went, to, I go to the toilet, got and like literally having a piss and blacked out. Boom, oh, just shit. fell on the floor. Um, my friends carried me out 
took me outside, got me an ambulance, and I just I went to a hospital. Um, I just had like a bad concussion, but it was scary, man. I remember just having a piss, and literally the room just went, well, I'm like just went black, like that. So, um, yeah. <laughs> and that's crazy, like, man. I want more. <laughs> that's wild. Yeah. Um, it's an interesting experience to get knocked out. I've. Yeah. So when I was an amateur, I only got. I got dazed. I didn't even get knocked out, but I just couldn't. So I got hit square mm. right here in the nose. Yeah. And I just, I fall back on my back. And I could have gotten up, but I didn't know what way was up or down or left or right. Mm. So I'm just like, bro. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just lay here for a minute. <laughs> Let me just, yeah. yeah, getting knocked out is yeah. an interesting it's a w yeah, experience. It's a w yeah, it's not something you want to get used to. Really. No, definitely not. <laughs> <laughs> nah, I mean, to be honest, I, I've never um, I've never been knocked out, but I've been dropped. I've probably been dropped the hardest in sparring. And I remember I remember going back, well, this is going back probably like eight or nine years now, but there was a guy in my gym as a pro boxer at the time called Ben Hall. And we used to spar rounds and rounds and rounds. Mm. And, and to be honest, I used to get the better of it. So I think I sort of went in that spar like, right, okay, like, you know, I'm going to get the better of this, you know. And I remember he caught me and he dropped me. Um, and I, I, got, I got back up and I finished the spa, but I just cannot remember anything about that spa. And I remember like being it's sat crazy. down in, in the change rooms afterwards. And to be honest with you, I was trying to sort of like make out like... I what was, happened? <laughs> yeah, I was like, yeah, like sort of styling it out. But um, yeah, man, that, that was scary. Because it just like, it cuts out like a bit of your life. Do you know what I mean? It's <laughs> like, you're like, you can't remember any of it. I remember my good friend who was a pro boxer as well. He fought at the York Hall Bethnal Green in London in a title fight and he got knocked out. He got knocked out cold uh, and they took him back to the change rooms, obviously, to look after him. That And he actually started warming up, warming up. And, he, and his trainer was like, what are you doing? He's like, I'm getting warmed up for the fight. I'm like, no, no, you've just been knocked out. <laughs> like, like, just honestly, it just Holy cuts that shit. thing out of your, like... That's crazy. Yes, <laughs> it's scary, <laughs> man. <laughs> man. Yeah, that's the it's the mind, it's the yeah. brain, man. Like yeah. this is different. It's uh, you know what I can compare it to is like people who, when you when they get older. I I if I could choose, obviously I don't have a choice in like how I die, but if I have a choice in how I die, I'd rather die from like a physical sickness than yeah. a mental sickness. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because yeah. you see people go out here. Yeah. And it's just it's sad, man. It's, yeah, and it's hard hard for everyone else to see it as well. Definitely. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Especially people that care yeah. about you, you yeah. know that kind yeah. of stuff. Yeah. And it's funny you were you were talking about before we started the podcast about that being something with fighters about mm. like mental health and yeah that's um, most people don't know that that's something you guys deal with yeah you know? it's 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 massive as well it's huge like um, and you know like. I said to you earlier, I don't, I don't know if that's because, you know, we're males and we're right. stubborn. Tough and we're, guys. Yeah, yeah, you know, we don't want to express our feelings. Right. Um, but actually, you know, in a few sort of dark moments, where you know, being around my fight friends, they've really opened up to me and I've really opened up to them. Um, and I feel like we need to we need to do that on a bigger scale so that, you know, it w will help other fighters, you For know, sure. because, you know, especially when you leave fighting, you know, it scares me. Like, I'm I'm looking for an exit route now, like, as a coach, you know, trying to sort out all that, all that kind of stuff. But, mm. you know, the day that I actually retire from fighting and I can't fight anymore is... It's, it's a scary moment because like I say I've been doing it 22 years I don't know how to do anything else so sure. you know and I, I look on you know a few of my heroes from back in England like Ricky Hatton um, who's who's obviously retired now and they turn to drink drugs and you know they're trying to fill that void with something that's with not something positive yeah. that is just it's not good you're never you're never going to fill that void mm. you know I kind I feel that the only way you're going to you know get that be able to fill that void is, is through coaching and trying to get a passion through, you know, through other people. That's, mm. that's the only way I can see it. Um, but yeah, this, you know, it's been happened to quite a few of my fighter friends who have just, you know, gone down a bit of a, <laughs> yeah, like, mm. you know, the bad path. I'm not, I'm not going to say that I haven't because I have, I, you know, I've done it in, in the past. Um, you know, I've had to have like surgeries where I've had like a year out, you know, 15 months out and, can't train you can't fight you know you can't um, earn money at the end of the day and you turn a drink you turn to whatever picks you up in that moment um mm. 
So yeah, I think I think it'd be a big like a big thing for fighters. Very therapeutic because I know I know just speaking from my experiences when I talk to fighters, I it's just nice to get it off my chest. Mm-hmm. Definitely, know? and nice that someone else recognizes that as well. You Definitely. know, like a like a good friend of mine, uh, Steve Townsell. Um, you know, we have some really deep chats because you know it's. We're not we're not just saying this for effect, mm. you know. It's on our mind a lot, and and you know, um, yeah, we have some really good chats, and that's one when we come up with an idea of like perhaps we, we need to start a podcast, and you know, talking about you know getting fighters on, talking about all their lives, or their careers. Um, yeah, at the end yeah. of the day, it's gonna help them yeah. as definitely. well. You know what I'm yeah. saying? Like, yeah. And I think and, people and that void could be filled definitely. You know, yeah. by by letting the uh, by creating a space where these people are, are comfortable enough yeah. to yeah. to yeah. say, hey, you know, yeah, this guy gets it. You know, I'm I'm going through this, and this guy mm. gets it. He understands mm. what I'm going through. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, and I think people will have a deeper appreciation for fighters. Yeah, you know, because they'll be able to see on a human level, they'll be able to relate with you because they'll probably be going through something like that in their own lives. Yeah, but they they never f- could have thought that a fighter, which is uh. seen as this alpha male, this strongest of men can also go through something like that you know what i mean it's yeah. it's important yeah and like like i say i've seen a lot of fighters um you know a lot a lot of fighters you know who had great careers um and they sort of all seem to fall down that path mm. um so yeah so if we can all just help each other it's a community like a fight community um so yeah it would definitely It'd help be something people. great yeah definitely yeah, yeah, yeah. i think so yeah. for sure yeah I'll definitely we'll yeah. Whatever I can do to help you with that. Yeah, uh, no, I'd, thank I'd you. love I appreciate to. appreciate it. Definitely, yeah. for sure. So as far as, the, f- I know you got to recover. Um, you got to do the stem cell stuff. Mm-hmm. What do you got going on as far as, do you have anything out going on outside of fighting? Yeah, so, um, you know, I've just got a job down at a gym on Miami Beach. Cool. Um, so I'm a trainer down there. Um, you know, it's more it's called West, West Wave? Uh, West Avenue Boxing. West Avenue. West Avenue. At the moment, it, it may change. The name may change. Um, it's very new. It's only been open like two weeks. Cool. Um, it's a it's a sort of like a box hit type thing. Um, but I'm obviously doing you know a lot of technical boxing down there, one on one with people. Okay. I love it. Like that's what I used to do back in England. I had my own gym back in England. Um, and you know I recognised that it did. I I had that passion for coaching, and I do get um a little bit of that. You know that I do with the fighting from doing that, so that's something that I definitely have to do. Not just for money, for for my own <laughs> well being as right. well. You know, I'm never going to be one of these people that just you know goes off and does a a, a nine till five. I want to, I want to stay in in fighting. Definitely, I think it's important. Do you yeah. see yourself coaching fighters in the future? Yeah, one, one million percent. Like I say, from seeing the tryouts in Miami a couple of weeks ago and how people are just jumping into this sport now um I've, and a lot of people yeah. who don't know what they're doing which is yeah, dangerous right yeah, yeah very <laughs> very dangerous like like for me like as a professional boxer like i turned pro at 18 i was super super naive man like mm. so naive like and i had managers i had promoters a lot of people take advantage of me you know and which is a common occurrence is fighting it's all, super it, common. i mean it happens all the time um that's why more more fighters need to get involved as managers and trainers yeah. and that because you've got a lot of guys who are coming straight out of university with a business degree and everything else who know how to exploit people. And at the, at the end of the day, us fighters, we're not the most intelligent people. We're not, yeah. you know, we, we fight at the end of the day. We're not paid to think. <laughs> we're <laughs> paid to fight. Fair so, enough. you know, I've seen a lot of fighters be exploited. Um, it's terrible. And I hate it. So, you know, if I can get into the fight game and, and get my own little management going where I can look after fighters, you know, because I can see it all coming now um, to the point where, I'm, you know, promoters probably find me quite hard to deal with because right. I just, I'm not taking anyone's shit anymore. Like, you know, everyone's coming from an angle. I know, like, and so... Yeah, yeah, he did it on his own too in yeah. England. Yeah. So yeah, yeah, yeah. he was it yeah. was like he was his own promotion, yeah. his own management, his own training. Mm. And he did it all his own. Yeah, and yeah, that that just comes from like I say, putting putting so much trust in other people to do their job, and they don't do it. Um, so yeah, it makes him, it makes him hard to hard to work with because <laughs> yeah. yeah. he knows the truth. He knows everything. Yeah. He knows yes. how it works. Like. You know, I know I know it happens in all industries and that. Um, you can't bullshit a bullshit. Yeah. 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 Um, but at the end of the day, you know, I, I'm 32 now. You're putting me in a big fights. 
you know, there's got to be, um, there's got to be a little bit of fairness there. <laughs> yeah, for sure. No, and and yeah. I mean, at the end of the day, you're you, to take advantage of someone who's literally like they're getting hammered and destroyed and chopped up into pieces. You yeah. know, it's it's it's. I, I mean, I've got to like so more more so at the minute from professional boxing. Um, like some of the stories, man. Like it's just you know. Like yeah. I, I was. I was. I mean, I was. I was in the gym every day. I was. In, I was in a really good gym. Like I'm not just saying it. I had like Anthony Joshua, world heavyweight champion. Oh, wow. Like Carl Frotch, world champion. Wow. Darren Barker, world champion. Ricky Burns, world champion. Kevin Mitchell. Was this I before was, Anthony Joshua lost the the title? This was before Anthony Joshua lost. Yeah, yeah. So um, I was in a really good gym, um, and obviously you had. TV in there every day. You had the promoters in there every day. The sharks were circling. Do you know what I mean? And some, just some of the talk, mm. some of the talk. Yeah. Um, I mean, I won't say his name, but the biggest promoter, arguably in the world, um, he was in the gym, and I remember um, him saying to me, he had two guys who were massive, massive sell, uh, ticket sellers, massive ticket sellers, like selling thousands, mm. but they were garbage, <laughs> garbage, right? But and he was literally stood there and he's like, do you know what? I can't find anyone in the country bad enough for this guy to beat. So that the circus, just, <laughs> do you know what I mean? That's just crazy. So the circus just keeps going on. Just That's keeps crazy. going on. You're just feeding in people to win because at the end of the day, the promoter, you're selling thousands of tickets. Yeah, <laughs> yes, please. That's like, crazy. So, um, and that's what boxing is. like. And like I say, I've been in that, around that so long it just like in the mm. end when I actually lost my license I was thinking about retiring anyway and I was only 26 like I hadn't wasn't even in my peak yet do you know what I mean so I was just so done with it mm. just all the bullshit like um you know you I'd be fighting on massive bills at like in front of 15,000 people I'd be getting the driver would be taking me there I'd be put up in a lovely um, hotel yeah the driver would take me to the venue and everything else and then if you lost, <laughs> take yourself to the hospital, get a taxi to the hospital. To, wow. Honestly, like, it's, it's like... It's, That's crazy, Yeah, man. it's crazy. You're on your own. Like, you were literally on your own. Like, um, and a lot of people don't know that. And then you see these promoters come on TV and that's that's the worst bit because they're like, you know, they're pay they're painting this picture of who... Of who you are. Yeah, yeah, yeah like, oh, yeah, we're doing this for the fighters. We'd, no, you're not. You don't give a fuck about the fighters. Yeah, like, you know, deep down, everyone knows that. But yeah, it's um, so. This brings up an interesting subject that I that I talk about all the time. So, what do you think about? I know you're you're more a boxer bare knuckle, but in MMA, you know, the UFC has this fame for giving you a stage and making you famous, mm. but they're not the best paying organization. Yeah, I wouldn't know. I'm not a fighter, but yeah. it's it's what people say. Mm -hmm. And then you have something like a Bellator mm -hmm. that maybe pays their, their fighters better, but you're not going to get that recognition. Yeah. From a fighter standpoint, how hard is that decision to make? Because you know, if I go over here, I'm going to become that guy, yeah. but I'm, I'm not going to get paid my worth. But if I go over here, I'm going to get paid more than worth, but I, I, maybe people won't even know who I am. Yeah. So what, what goes on in a, in a fighter's brain when he has to make that kind of decision? You know, it's it's like UFC have got the monopoly, haven't they? So Pretty much. It's um, you know, I, I know you know Bellator put good shows on, but you know you. It's not when, the UFC. When you're in UFC, the yeah. endorsements and and everything else that come with hand in and hand. The recognition, with it, you know, um, it's, yeah. yeah, and just making your name like more like mainstream, making your name because you know, too not too many people watch Bellator, but mm. you know, casuals will watch UFC, won't they? Um, but it's hard, you know, like. At the end of the day, I think the biggest thing that I found hardest when I was a professional boxer, you know, I was boxing on TV, I was boxing in front of 15,000 people at a packed O2 arena, but I'm getting paid peanuts and I'm asking for sponsors and everything else. And people are thinking, why does he need sponsors for? The guy's fighting on TV. In Most front people of think you're rich. People. Yeah. think I'm rich, but I'm telling you now, when I won the English title, I boxed a guy who was 12 and 0, right? He was unbeaten. One of the biggest fighters on uh, of this promotion, right? Um, I was co uh, co main event to Anthony Joshua. So imagine how much Anthony Joshua was earning that night. A few million. <laughs> yeah. So um, I'm co main event, 10 p.m. on Sky Sports, which is massive. Like, right. I've made it. Do you know what I mean? Um, and I come in as the away fighter. 
I, I knew what the plan was. Like, I knew I, I was brought in to get beat. Do you know what I mean? But right. the thing is, title, and I got in there and I beat this guy, 12 and 0. Um, I'm English champion in front of thousands of people on TV. And I made four and a half thousand pounds out of that. So that's like five thousand dollars. And to think that I trained ten weeks for that. Wow. You, and you had to that pay down, your trainers, you pay my trainer, my manager. So actually I probably walked away with what three grand for a ten round English title fight on TV, co main event to Anthony Joshua. That's insane. And you're like, how how can I live like that? Like, cause literally after that fight, I'm thinking to myself, well, I need to get back in training because I need to earn money again because all the, all that's done, that free grand, is just paid for my training <laughs> for that fight. That's insane, man. Um, yeah, so, you know, it's just, yeah, it's hard. They're like, There's no real incentive to be a boxer anymore. Like, that's why it's super important for guys like you. I mean, it's unfortunate you had to go through those things, mm-hmm. but if it wasn't for those hard lessons, mm-hmm. you wouldn't want to be that guy to be there for the next generation of yeah, fighters coming yeah. up, be like, listen, I think that's why it's so important for bad things to happen to us. Mm-hmm. Because when those bad things happen to you, you learn these lessons and then you can pay it forward. Mm-hmm. Wisdom, so my life's purpose has become just to, to find wisdom and share it with the world. So that for you has become such a, that was a pivotal moment for you, yeah. you know? Yeah. So it's like, all right, this happened to me, but I'm not, this isn't yeah, going to happen to anybody, happen to anybody, anybody else. else. Yeah. You know? Yeah. So that's yeah. that's pivotal to yeah. have a fighter run a promotion, be your manager, you know, show you the ropes. That that's going to be night and day. Yeah. You know, the experience yeah. you had versus the experience someone will come up through a management company you yeah. start. It'll uh, it, and it could also you know create change. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you know, at that point I was twenty three. I'm you know I'm going in blind pretty much. You know, and like I say, all these people, uh, all these promoters, managers, they know how to talk to. People, you know, that mm. you, you sort of feel like they're your friend. Right. Almost, do you know what I mean? Naively. Um, and then, yeah. <laughs> yeah, get, it's... Yeah, you get stabbed in the back. But that's, the, yeah. Fight, the fight industry is is one of those few industries where it's just common to hear those stories. Yeah. And I think at this point, it's happened so much and for so many years that it's going to be common for guys like you to step up. Yeah. You know, and do that mm-hmm. and, and become that that wave of all right we're, this is over this yeah. isn't going to happen anymore you know what it's I mean? important like yeah like I, i've i have literally i know people that back home um like the boxing circuit back home or if if you're not on tv you're not earning anything you're you're earning the hundreds and if you're not a ticket seller you're making nothing you're, yeah. you're making nothing i actually know a guy that I fought three times, Danny Connor. Um, I went and watched him once, and he actually fought um, he, out of his own pocket. Yeah, he, he, pa- to pay. he paid. He, he paid to, pay. to fight. And you think you're in a professional sport where you know the worst could happen, and you, he's actually paying to, to, to fight. fight. Um, it's insane. <laughs> it's insane. Yeah, as much yeah. money as there is in boxing, right? Yeah. Because yeah. boxing arguably isn't the most famous combat sport anymore, but the amount that fighters and promoters at the top, obviously at the top mm. echelon get paid. It's it's nuts. It's like, yeah. br- there's more than enough money to yeah. go around, so why yeah. does that happen? Completely. Yeah. Um, you know? And it's really frustrating because, like, you know, the minute, because I say to people all the time about this, like, you look, you know, I suppose combat sport in general, the top 3%, Millions and millions. But there's nothing, <laughs> there's nothing in between. <laughs> nothing. Nothing in between. So, you know, I've, I know people that have fought for a world title, for forty thousand dollars, <laughs> for a man. world title, it's you crazy. know, and then you think, oh, you know, Canelo just made seventy million in his last right. fight, you know, and I don't begrudge anyone. Like I was a not. massive Mayweather fan. I'm a massive Mayweather fan, and I've heard people meet him and they hate him. He's so arrogant in person, and everything else. And and do you know what? I'm just like he he's smash boxing as far <laughs> yeah. as I'm concerned. <laughs> he can do what he wants because yeah. he's yeah. earned it. Like, and I don't begrudge anyone from making that money. Um, but now, like, you've got, like, Tyson Fury, who's back from, you know, obviously from England, and he's world heavyweight champion. He's earning millions and millions. And the f- these big fights aren't happening because they want to take it to, like, Saudi Arabia, yeah. where they're going to get another 50 million. I just think it's, like, these guys are getting mega greedy at the top now. Do you mm. know what I mean? And, like I said, you, there's more than enough money more to go around. Yeah. 
because you're either earning five hundred dollars for a fight or you're earning five million. Five million, <laughs> right? Ten million, twenty million. You know? Yeah, um, yeah. It's unf- and then no, and then let's take it a step further. Now Tyson Fury wants to fight Francis and Ghana. Yeah, like yeah. you have these these because that's just. I mean, don't get me wrong. No, that's a money grab. It's going to generate silly so money. Much money. So many people are going to watch it. I I get it. I get it from a business right. point of view. But Tyson Fury, world heavyweight champion, Francis Ngannou never had a boxing match. I mean, you know who's going to win? Obviously. Yeah, like you know, and and Tyson Fury. I mean, I've watched a lot of documentary. Uh, interviews and st- stuff like that and they're like look you know we don't begrudge him making that money but he's world heavyweight champion he needs to prove it and there's a there's a list of names behind his name exactly that want to be champion he needs to prove that um but yeah. you know you know what it is now the promoters the whole what what's going to be big on social media goes now 100 percent. and you know fury and garnu you've got the boxing fans you've got the ufc fans you've got the casual fans um, you know Tyson Fury fighting someone who really, really deserves to f- fight for the world title, but isn't really well known. Mm. It's not pulling in the pay per views and and all that kind of stuff. It's a business, isn't it? It's um, was it someone said to me, boxing is um, boxing is is a sport pretending uh, be uh, it's pretending to be a sport, a business pretending to be a sport. Sorry, mm. yeah, yeah, and it, it's right. You're it's right. Just, yeah. Uh, yeah, boxing. What do you think about these these YouTube fighters like Jake Paul and all that stuff? What do you think that is that good or bad for boxing? I mean, like I was mad about it when it first started mm. because you know, like again, I was ten years old when I started boxing. You know, the love of boxing, I love boxing, the sport of boxing, and then to you know to see top top level talent not make it. And see people like Jake, Jake Paul, Paul and stuff yes. like that because they were on Disney or whatever he was on. <laughs> it's nuts. It's just like oh, you know, it breaks your heart because. And then they give them unfair access to opponents to yeah. the, to yeah. maybe not top fighters or top you know top boxers, but mm. they're giving them Nate Diaz. Yeah. You know what I mean? So it's like I'm with you, and, yeah. and I'm I'm a fight fan. Period. So to see you know Nate, he basically took a bunch of you know took these fights. Yeah. I want out of my contract to go fight Jake Paul. It's like I get it. You're older. You're trying to retire. You're you're, you're gonna make a good paycheck. And, and these yeah. guys, they 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 train their whole lives. Mm. Yeah, you know their whole lives to get title shots. And, yeah, and these guys are getting title shots for and these big paychecks for like yeah. So, yeah so, social media is everything now. And yeah, that's, and that's what it is. You know, sure. even I. So I I got my Instagram taken away about a week ago, and I was on like forty five k. I had a, my account before that deleted. That was on twenty three k. And I'm trying to explain to people: look, at the end of the day, this this Instagram is a bargaining tool for when I fight. Do you know what I mean? Like because all them people are going to watch me fight, and the mm. promoters are looking and not are not looking at how talented you are. They're thinking, right? How big a presence has this Does guy have- got social media wise? Um, it's happening in bare knuckle. It's obviously happened in boxing, UFC. Um, yeah, with Conor McGregor. Like, yeah, you know? yeah. Like, but there's people who 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 cannot fight, but they've got you know social oh, media come presence. over, and they've got all these followers, and people are going to tune in. I mean, the UFC did it with Brock Lesnar. They did yeah. it with CM Punk. CM yeah. Punk. Yeah, like, um, I mean, no, I I know with BKFC they had um, Paige Van Zandt. Um, That's right. She was getting like 450k a fight. Lost both her fights. You know, crazy. Pff, lovely job. I think it 450k. Um, but at least she, even yeah. in that position, she was a fighter, right? Yeah, so she I kinda, was a fighter. Yeah, and, you know? and and again, I can, you know, where she's the whole like modeling thing. She's a cute blonde girl. Oh, she's doing bare knuckles, so it had the shock value to it and that as well. Um, I, I, you know, I can. I'll see take it. that over Jake Paul. Yeah, I'll tell you that because yeah, that she's yeah. a fighter. Yeah, you know, background in MMA comes over to bare knuckle, but like Jake Paul's a YouTuber. You yeah, know, it's like yeah. damn. So I know? don't know too much about this guy, but um, is a guy called Bryce Hall. Bryce Hall. So what is he like a social media guy? He's a social media guy. So yeah. He's fighting bare knuckle in yeah, a couple of weeks. Because he's, he's fighting the cut man. Cut man. man. Yeah, cut he's man. he's here G, from yeah. Miami. Yeah, yeah he's cut, fighting. Cut wait, man. Cut he's man fighting the cut man G, um, who's from Miami. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Ben Ako, yeah, and Albuquerque. And he's good, bro. He's really yeah, good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. He's really good. I've seen a couple of live fights, and he's yeah. really good. It's a thing now. Yeah. Like, anybody who has a following, you know what I like about it, though? Like, 
you could end up seeing someone you want to like a, a douchebag that want you want him to yeah. get the shit kicked out of him. You're like, all right, you know, yeah. like <laughs> some guy like Simon Simon Cowell versus <laughs> you know, that's that's yeah. what I do like about it. And it's like finally this guy's gonna get his ass kicked. Yeah, bro. Yeah, he's yeah, a piece yeah, of shit yeah, or whatever. Yeah. You know? a celebrity death match. Yeah, yeah, like a real life <laughs> celebrity death match. Celebrity death match. But I love that. Part. <laughs> <laughs> it was hilarious. Yeah, that was a great show, man. Yeah. That was such a good show. Yeah, I'm. I'm not. I'm. I'm a fight purist. Yeah. Like when you at. You want to know how much of a purist I am? Ask me who the greatest boxer of all time is. Who is it? Muhammad Ali. Yeah, I, I, I agree. That's how much yeah. of a purist I am. I'm like, ah. Yeah, I am. Um, People try to I'm argue. A hero, off. man. He's yeah. a hero. Just, there'll never be another Muhammad Ali. No. The charisma. No. He was just, yeah, everything about him, the boxing ability, but also the, yeah, how The iconic personality, yeah, you know. Yeah, yeah. He was just. He started, he invented trash talking, yeah. basically. Yeah, you know? pretty much. Yeah, yeah. so yeah. that's, that's what, like, I admire these guys for the greatness, yeah. you know, you talk about Muhammad Ali, you talk about, I mean, Mike Tyson is one of my favorite fighters mm -hmm. just because of, I mean, the sheer ferociousness. Yeah, yeah. You, you, we go back to that hunger. Like yeah. these guys used to go out in these shiny robes and all these, and he used to walk out with a man, cut the towel in half, man. Just <laughs> <laughs> cut the, and like these short shorts and yeah. dirty. He's like, man, I'm gonna, yeah. and then Mike Tyson used to say something crazy. He was like, man, I would look him in the eye and whenever they looked away, I knew I had him. Yeah, you knew. Like, <laughs> I remember um, before the uh, Michael Spinks fight, um, Michael Spinks said that um, Tyson was punching the, his changing room walls, like with his gloves on, mm. punching, and he could hear it. He could hear it him, like, punching the walls and pulling it out. Michael and Spinks, he, like, Michael Spinks just, he, he folded, mate, in that fight, didn't he? He didn't want to <laughs> like be a there. Launch I mean, I don't blame him, really. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But um, that was back when Tyson was, like, unstoppable. Wasn't Ferocious. It? Yeah, you just, know? Yeah. yeah, man. That, that, I'm a purist, so when when things like the YouTube fights happen, it is irritating to me because yeah. I love fighting and I and I see what these you know fighters put their heart and soul into their mm -hmm. careers, and you're literally sacrificing your body to become a great fighter. Mm -hmm. So I I don't like it much, uh, but hey, it's I guess it's a part of the yeah. part of everything now. It's evolving. Yeah. yeah, yeah, and it's it's there's always hot trends, right? So mm -hmm. it's it's not gonna last forever. I mean. Logan Paul had his moment with Floyd Mayweather, and that kind of went away. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, that we do have these exhibition fights now. Like Floyd, he's mm. going around, and I'm not against that. You know, okay, get your money. You yeah, know? I'm not. Like, everyone sort of said, and I'm like, do you know what? Like, he beat everyone in his day. And now he's just having fun. Now he's just having fun, making money. Yeah. You can't blame him for it. You know what I see what Floyd Mayweather's doing now? I see it as, you guys know the big three? Have you heard of the big mm. three? No? It's a basketball league that Ice Cube opened up. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And right, it's okay. three on three, half court. And he gets guys who are retired, like the greatest basketball. Yeah. And those guys can't play a full season, but they can play one good game. Yeah, yeah you know, definitely. That's what, and that's what I see. That's what Floyd yeah. Mayweather is doing yeah. now. He's like, I can't, I can't put in a fight camp and do, yeah. but I can have one entertaining fight with yeah. a semi, you know, with yeah. a semi pro guy. Yeah. So hey, go have fun, fair, man. Yeah, fair play to him. You know who I'm dying to see is Mike Tyson. I, I want to see him like. Yeah, he must <laughs> be cracking on now. He must be nearly sixty now. He's like fifty seven. Yeah. yeah, but have um, you, see, you see him train though. But yeah, you see what? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I mean, it will always be animal. there, even if he was eighty seven. <laughs> <laughs> I still want to. I still want to see Mike Tyson fight. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, absolutely, I would too. <laughs> because he did that one fight with Roy Jones, and you were like, eh, yeah, yeah, I want yeah. more, you know. Yeah, yeah, I mean, Roy Roy Jones. Like Roy Jones was a big hero of mine. Like in his prime. Oh. It, oh my god, he was an alien. Just like, like in, in the nineties, like. In his peak, no one was beating Nobody. Him. Nobody. Like, the guys that he lost to, they wouldn't have, he wouldn't have lost to them in his <sighs> peak. Um, you know, and... It broke my heart when he lost to Antonio Tarver, man. Yeah, Ugh. yeah. And he was just on... It was on the drop from there, wasn't he? Yeah, um, pretty much. But, I mean, like, you know, being a fighter, I can see why he's doing it because, you know, like I say, it's all he's ever done. Like, mm. and that's what gets him up in the morning and gives him purpose. And how can you, you know, how can you tell someone not to do that anymore if... If that's what they want to do, like yeah. so, but he is, you know, he's getting these losses where he's getting quite badly knocked out. His records he's not his what it was yeah. looking like, you know, and that is disappointing. But at the same time, I, I can see why he's doing it. That's why I think it's so important early on. What's happening to you is mm. a blessing, mm. because you've understood. Okay, I can still stay in fighting and transition mm. to a different position and still be yeah. super involved in fighting. 
and I can contribute in a big way. Yeah. You know, that's mm. guys like Roy Jones. Imagine him being your manager, yeah, yeah, or him yeah. being your trainer. Yeah, like you'd be the best boxer on the planet. Yeah. So that is super important that that happened to you early yeah. on in your career. I yeah, you know? I think like probably from Roy Jones' point of view as well. <laughs> like he's lived his whole life being the man, hasn't he? So yeah. Being a coach. And the spotlight being on his fighters and that, I mean, I don't, I don't know how you deal with that. I, I don't know. We'd, That's fair. Do you know? Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Like, um, you just gotta be in the right mindset. You know, yeah. you're in that mindset yeah. where yeah. where you're focused on mm. helping other people. Now, you know, maybe he was in a different environment, yeah. different yeah. mindset. Yeah. You know, who knows? What I think is, if you if you build a stable of fighters that are all elite, you become as I'm the best training coach on yeah. the planet. Yeah. Yeah. So it's all a matter of I. What, back to where Regal said, it's perspective. Like, if you look at it from the right perspective, you can still be the man, and you can still be the top guy, yeah. just in a different way, mm -hmm. you know? We're, unfortunately, our biology is, you know, we can't outlast Mother Nature. So, well, so like, the, the guy that I'm training with at the minute, um, Eric El Tigre Castananos, mm. and he's, like, I mean, he's, like, early 50s now, um, but back in the day, he was, like, five-time world kickboxing champion. He had, like, 45 pro fights, 144, knocked the guy out that he lost to, like, and he was, like, listing off, like, the champions that beat. He beat everyone in Thailand, wow. Chile. Uh, he went over to England, Holland, uh, kickboxing is massive wow. in Holland. He went all over Europe. Um, and he actually showed me a few videos, like, where <laughs> he's, like, fighting three times in one night, and he's, like, knocked them all three out. And this guy's Cuban? <laughs> yeah, Cuban. Cuban yeah, guy. Cuban no guy. way. Castellanos. Yeah. Castellanos. Castellanos. Man. Uh, a Cuban uh, you got to meet this bad. guy. <laughs> <laughs> but he's just, I love him so much. Like, it's, it's quite funny because he's really Cuban. And yeah, like, you he's can understand broken his English. English. But, yeah. but me and him are just so close. And he, and you can, he's so passionate like, about Like, I don't understand training. the guy when he's talking. In, I don't understand yeah. the guy when he's really? talking. Really? And he understands. <laughs> <laughs> Man. Has up? Has up? You real, you real warrior. You real warrior. Yeah, I love him, man. He's he's just like that's awesome. Yeah, he's so passionate, um, and like he's got that gym, uh, young tigers, and it's full of MMA fighters, kickboxers, bare knuckle boxing professionals, amateurs, and he, and he treats everyone the same. Mm. And I love that, and he's just yeah, like I say, he's just so passionate, and you can see if someone said to him, "You're fighting tomorrow," he'd do it like. <laughs> but he's he's just got that he's got that power. Every time I, I walk in the gym, he's just he's so excited to see you and that. And I just think I hope I'm like that. One yeah, day. yeah. I hope I'm like that. So there's a common theme. I invite all kinds of people on my podcast. I've you're like the second fighter I've ever had. I have business people. I have I had a model yesterday, and two a couple of reoccurring things that I I always love. You are you're already successful when you chase what you want in life. Like when you're when you chase what you're passionate about, mm -hmm. when you chase your dream, you're already winning. Mm -hmm. Like who can tell you you're a failure? Nobody. Nah. <laughs> like no one. fuck you. I left England and I came to Miami and I'm doing it. Like fuck you. You know yeah, what I mean? I'm it's, it's like I put I put that video up the other week because you know obviously I'm I'm in America. I've, I've got my car. My car's a little bit beat up. Like <laughs> but it's you know I'm, I'm in I'm in America trying to make my dream happen and I put a video up and everyone was killing me about my car. It was like a really <laughs> like positive, positive video and everyone was absolutely <laughs> killing me about my car. And then you click on these people's profiles and that and, and like, losers. What, like one guy, <laughs> one, I'll, I'll, I'll never forget, I'll never forget one guy is like, look, I ain't got anything against fishing, right? But he's like, Posting up pictures of different uh, fishing weights and, <laughs> and things like that, and I'm like, and I'm like man, oh my god, that's as you have not experienced that's life. as excited as your life gets, mate. I was like, just keep it. posting fishing. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? All right. So wait, we're backtracking, and since we're on the social media tip, you said how how'd you lose your Instagram? So um, uh, commenting back to a troll. So when I mean, like I say, this video when I was trending had like. It'd been out like two or three weeks, had like 1.5 million views, wow. like 40, 50,000 likes. And uh, my my profile was just getting bigger and bigger every day. And I was literally, when I say every five minutes, it was every five minutes, people were saying to me, you've got brain damage, you've got this, you've got CTE, da -da, just tearing into me. Right. And and like, uh, to be fair to myself, 95% of it, I ignored Um but like you know, I spend a lot of time on my own in that. And you, when your phone's constantly blinging up, and you just you're going to respond to something hate, eventually. Hate. Yeah. Um, 
So I commented back to one of them. Um, and next thing I know, <laughs> my Instagram's been deleted. That's such um, garbage. And I just put a video up after and said, look, Instagram, like, you're not protecting me. I'm getting brain damage, CTE, you've got this, you, you're a bum, your your car's wow. fucked up, all this kind of stuff. Every minute of every day, I'm thinking to myself, you're not protecting me. And then I say something back to, to defend my honour, mm. and you've deleted my account. Like it's, And yeah. it happened twice? It's happened twice, yeah. Wow. Yeah. So you've had to start your Instagram over twice? Twice. Man, that's Which sucks. is like, and you know, as pathetic as it sounds, it's my lifeline, especially being out here on my own, like no, for work, for listen, everything, you know? Take it from from me that I'm 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 building the personal brand and I'm doing all that stuff. For a fighter, branding himself is mm -hmm. huge, huge. Are you kidding me? If a guy like you walks in and you have a hundred thousand followers on Instagram, they're like, "Whoa, all right, we got to pay this guy some money." Yeah, you know, yeah, it's yeah. and unfortunately, not everybody can do that. But it's just learning that balance. Like, all right, yeah. I got to learn how to promote myself. I got to. There's just certain. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, and, yeah you've got. A, I couldn't agree more. You have to be so much more than a fighter now. Like, talent gets you so far. Like, you've got to be marketable, uh, controversial. Entertaining, yeah, right? Yeah, like, it's, yeah, it's the whole package. Even even the the look, your look, everything, yeah. like, you know. Um, yeah, it's it's just got to sell, hasn't Definitely. it? Definitely. Yeah, yeah. Definitely. Well, hopefully it won't happen a third time. <laughs> I'm not going to hold my breath. <laughs> That's just like. Oh, it's is it? So do you familiar, find that man. it's easier to build it back up, like on the second um, or third? Not really. No, not really, because you know, obviously, I had the blue tick. I had a big account. And I feel like because there's a lot of fake accounts made of me as well. I don't mm. think people trust that it's actually me, mm. and I haven't got the blue tick. I haven't, you know, I haven't got all the followers now. So a lot of people just don't, you know, just don't follow it um, until like. BKFC or something like post about it. Like do like a like cross it, promotion. Yeah, like yeah. a genuine. Oh, that's that's his account. Mm. Um, but yeah, it has it has screwed me. I'm not gonna lie. Yeah. It's screwed me, man. You know what the the the, the solution is? <laughs> Have somebody handle your Instagram, yeah, man. Yeah. <laughs> Seriously. Yeah, I, I mean, I, I said this to my friend the other day. Like, you know, I can only imagine how badly like big celebrities. Yeah, like, no, they all have social media yeah, managers because like you, you, you can't couldn't, deal with it. Yeah, you can't. Like, you'd wake up every day looking at your phone like, wow, like, just horrible, spiteful stuff. And you think yeah. these people, like, they don't know anything about me. Yeah, <laughs> and, they, and they feel a certain way about me, but they've never met me in their life. Um, hey, yeah, Mike man. Tyson said something. He said... Uh, People have gotten too comfortable saying things yeah. on social media without getting punched Pushing in the, the face. face yeah. Well, this is my quote. Yeah. Social media has given a voice to so many people who do not need a voice. Yes. Like, 100%. They do not need. We don't need to hear your opinions because they're not made up of anything. Valid. Yeah, yeah. valid. <laughs> anything. No, 100%. Like, you're, no you're experiences, no nothing. Like, um, yeah, you've just got people literally sitting from at home, their couch, with a pint of beer in their hand. <laughs> Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. I would have done that. You got yeah. brain damage. You're, oh yeah. You know, you know what this reminds me of. Did you ever? You might remind. You might remember this because I don't know if you were in the United States at the time. There used to be a TV show called Pros versus Joes. Did you ever yeah. see that TV show? Is not that? It was. It was. They would get retired professional athletes, but semi-retired. I'm talking about retired a year or two ago, yeah. right? Uh, and then they would get average people that. That were those guys like, oh, yeah, I can beat yeah, that guy. Yeah, yeah. And they they put him to compete against each yeah, other. Yeah. Like, for example, they got Michael Irving, what? like fresh out of retirement. Yeah. <laughs> Bro, and he'd light this guy up and he'd <laughs> tackle the shit up. <laughs> like, and then that guy's like, yeah. he's like, what? what? Where's all that now? I thought you could. It was so funny. Yeah, that's class. Yeah. They, did that, they did that one episode with Randy Couture. They did one episode with Randy Couture, but Randy was only allowed to wrestle. Obviously, yeah. he couldn't punch him. Yeah. He destroyed I'll these. Bet. It was so funny. Yeah. Like, and Randy was a nice guy. He was yeah, all quiet. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you just saw the guy's faces after they lost, yeah. like, head down. We need to bring that back. Pros yeah. versus Joes. Yeah. Whoever made that show, let's yeah. bring it back. If you're if you're going to have a voice on social media, back yeah. it, you got to be out of back. Out, yeah, yeah. You know? um, absolutely. That'd be great. Yeah. Pros like, versus right. Joes. You're, come, you're on the show. <laughs> <laughs> Count Tyler in. I'm in. I'm the I'm the I'm the announcer. I'll be the host of the show. Pearls versus Joe's Montana <laughs> Method Edition. Let's bring it back. And I'll Let's tie one hand behind my back. As well. <laughs> <laughs> Man, that yeah, that show was so entertaining. It, that's what that's what social media nowadays reminds yeah, me of. It's these yeah. people who are just 
have no skill, no backing, and they just want to give their opinion, yeah. you know? It's, yeah, it's I, I like, I'll get to the point where, look, I don't mind a debate. If, if you know what you're on about, I don't mind a debate. It's the people who are just blurting out just Stupid, absolute incoherent un, stuff, yeah. unknowledgeable nonsense. Mm. Like, and it's just ugh, like, oh, it's crazy. Like, you can't even argue with people like that, really, because you're like, this guy ain't got a clue. Mm. Mm. It's uh, crazy. Tyler, it's been a pleasure having you here. Thank you. I usually wrap up uh, my podcast with three questions. So first question, what inspires you? Just to leave the best legacy that I can. You know, just uh, I think that my story, my story is so much more than fighting. It's 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 just determination. Like you can get where you want to be if you're determined. You show that heart. You will get there. You will get there. I think my story, hopefully, inspires a lot of people. Like I say, I'm from the arse end of nowhere in England, where you know, with all due respect, you know, I'm I'm the the biggest thing that's come out of that city. You know, there's no fighters or actors or anything like that because I don't believe that people believe that they can do it mm. back home. I don't I don't think I think that people have a very small town mentality. Um, and I didn't have that and that's why I'm here. So yeah, I just wanna I just want to inspire people. Like if you've got a dream, go for it. Because no one's gonna do it for you. <laughs> mm. I'm with you man. I'm a person that I try to tell people all the time the dream is all we got man. All we got in life. It's the only thing that matters. Mm -hmm. And if you don't chase it, you're not living life. Nah, you're really not. You're really not. I, I almost feel bad for people that will never get to experience having that dream and that purpose. Like, you know, when I've like got a big fight and in, in, in the pipeline, you know, for 10 weeks, I am just obsessed. So driven. Like, nothing will ever stop me. Mm. Um, and... Yeah, I feel bad that people will never get to experience yeah, that, man, because it's, it's, it's a nice feeling. I'm with you. When I, I run into people all the time that I haven't met in years, and they're like, man, I see you doing your podcast. That's so awesome. And I, I ask them, like, yeah, man, thank you. What, what do you. So what are you doing? And they're like, oh, I'm... Uh, and, they're, and they're still working at the same yeah, job they were yeah, working at 10 years yeah. ago. I feel my heart breaks because it's like, man, what I do isn't impossible. I'm just a guy who's going after what I want in life. Yeah. Like, you can do the same thing, mm -hmm. you know? It's so sad. It's heartbreaking, man. But, yeah. And I commend you, brother, because like I said, it's one thing for me to like go out there and chase a business, you know, to be a fighter. That's yeah. like... You got to love it. You got to yeah, love you it. You got to have a real passion for it. Nobody could... Like, no obstacles going to stop you. None. None whatsoever. Mm -hmm. So question number two, what's next for you? So like I say... Um, Hopefully, you know this stem cell treatment is gonna is gonna work well for me. Um, I get back with a boxing match, um, and just just see what comes up. Really, you Definitely. know, I like I say, I've, I've got a really big profile here in Miami. Um, yeah, I'm open to you know big fights. If one of these social media guys wants a boxing match, I'm in. I'm <laughs> in. Um, if they want a bare knuckle fight, yeah. <laughs> I'm even more in. Definitely right. Um, but yeah, just you know, like I say, I've got this job, um, you know, training people on on Miami Beach. That's something that really interests me as well. Um, just see what comes along. Yeah, Definitely. I just feel I feel like the, the opportunities here in Miami. There's just so many opportunities. So much you know, I'm meeting so many different people. Um, you know, who knows? In five years, I might not be fighting. I might be into something totally different. Right? Um, who knows? You know, and that's the that's the cool thing about Miami like I say you know I've had people you know would you would you do TV you know with your look with your you know and a lot of fighters get into stuff like that right. you know um, and I'm definitely open to it yeah. I mean a great example yeah. is Brendan Schaub look at yeah. him yeah, you know, yeah, yeah he exited out of fighting he started a, how I don't know how many successful podcasts at this yeah. point he has three or yeah. four of them he's a comedian like yeah. it's if, if but it goes back to what you said you're in a place where the opportunities are available you know what I mean? Yeah, it's and and I recognize that. That is one thing that I completely recognize here. Like you know, um, you know when people say to me about wanting to go, but would you go back to England? I'm just like, there's nothing there for me. Mm. Like that, but here, I'm just like, right, there's a lot. There's so much that I can get on with here. Um, like I say, the people I meet and that, um, yeah, man. Just uh, the American dream, isn't it? American dream, man. <laughs> the Eng the Englishman living the American dream. I yeah, love it. Yeah, I love it. Yeah. The Englishman from Hialeah. <laughs> <laughs> All righty. So, last question, Tyler. How do you want to be remembered? 
again, I just want to be remembered for I never lost sight of what I wanted. Mm. And I was super determined and I got it. I got it. I went I went all in. Um that's what I want to be remembered for, yeah. Like mm. just that legacy of do you know what? He had everything up against him, you know, like with the whole pandemic and, and everything else and coming over and being in a different country and I done it and um just show other people it can be done, isn't it? Definitely. Simple as that. Simple as that. That's awesome, brother. Yeah. Well, this has been super inspiring to meet you, brother. Thank you. This we'll do this again. Mm-hmm. Whenever you have a yeah, fight man. booked, yeah, yeah, let's yeah. promote it. Come back. Yeah. I'll yeah. definitely help you. Yeah, yeah. Whatever you need at, at your disposal, brother. Any any family of Rigo is a family of mine. So appreciate you, man. Definitely, brother. So uh that's it, guys. Another episode of Montana Method. Here's Tyler Goodjohn, El Tornado. Tell everybody how they can uh, connect with you. Well, I'd I'd like to say you can catch me on Instagram, but you can't at the minute because I've been deleted. Um, but I have got a new account. It's L Tornado uh, Zero One. Uh, I'm on Facebook under Tyler Goodjohn. I mean, all my fights are on YouTube. I have a documentary as well um, that won a lot of awards when I won the world title bare knuckle back in the UK. Um, so yeah, just all the support. Really means a lot. Awesome. Rigo, how can people connect with you? Uh, my Instagram is at, at Made with Miami. Um, my Facebook, I'm under Rigo Popo Acosta. Perfect. Alrighty, guys. Another episode of Montana Method Podcast signing out with special guest Tyler Goodjohn, El Tornado, and my good friend Rigo Acosta. Thank you guys for tuning in. Always remember, push it to the limit. The world is yours. And always, please, please remember, if you're not chasing a dream, life is meaningless. Till the next one. I've been out here hustling all my life Every day we get into it Really out here in these streets That's day and night Like there's nothing to it When I was going through it, dog I never got your call I never asked for nothing, no But now I want it all Promise I'ma do it Came from rags to riches Rags to riches Came from rags to riches Rags to riches Came from rags